Welcome everyone, Matt Paterini here with The Non-Traditional Pharmacist, part of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I am super fired up today for a new episode of The Non-Traditional Pharmacist Student Series. We have a fantastic rock star student with us today, Christy Chung, all the way from Vancouver, British Columbia, the University of British Columbia. Very active on social media, great supporter of the non-traditional pharmacist. So we're gonna have fun today, ask some questions about Christy's experience and get her take on a couple things in the field of pharmacy. So Christy, welcome to the non-traditional pharmacist. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you very much for having me and for accommodating my schedule over here with the time difference. Yes, the time, time difference, three hours, it's no big deal, we're happy to do it. Um, we'll get right to the questions and you know, with the pharmacy, uh, with the non-traditional pharmacist student series, we really want to get perspectives from from folks in pharmacy school now, going through different programs, and obviously being from uh, the part of the world you are from, it's going to be a great perspective uh, to share with um, our viewers. So let's start with our first question, which is, why did you choose to go to pharmacy school in the first place? Yeah, um, I actually did three three years of my undergrad beforehand. Um, two years were done at McGill University over in Montreal. Um, I started off with chemistry and kind of maneuvered my way into pharmacology, wanting to do more applications of biochem and things like that. Um, for my third year, I actually went on exchange to Singapore and I did a whole year exchange there. I really dove into the roots of pharmacology. I took courses in toxicology, things like that. And I found it very interesting, but I wanted to do more with my pharmacology knowledge. Um, and it was very spontaneous. I hadn't even thought about applying to a professional program, whether it be med, health, uh, dentistry or pharmacy. But for us in Canada, we're quite behind. So the year uh, after I after Singapore, that was the first year of the PharmD degree. Um, so our, ours is the first um, class of PharmDs. So I was like, oh, you know, the new curriculum sounds very interesting. It's a lot more clinical focused. You get a full year worth of rotations in fourth year, plus more rotations scattered around for a second and third year. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to try. I think I really like pharmacology. Pharmacy shouldn't be too different. And I'd be able to interact with patients, do more patient care type work. Um, so I, I just went for it. So it's a very spontaneous decision. Definitely not something that I've been thinking about beforehand. That, no, that it, sometimes it's not, right? I mean, you don't know what path you're going to take as you start exploring certain things and things catch yeah. your interest. You, uh, you know, try different things here and there, and it leads you down a certain path. But it's interesting you said uh, that Canada is, is behind in what well, I guess compared to the United States, maybe. Yes. Maybe, maybe, yes. maybe expand a little bit on how it's different in Canada compared to the United States in terms of pharmacy training? Because I, I think a lot of people probably don't know the difference. Right. Um, so I'm very fortunate to have connected with a lot of the pharmacists over in the States. So from what I understand, it's standard um, that everybody has a PharmD degree if they're a pharmacist. For us, um, for the most part, we're still, you know, bachelors of science students graduating with a pharmacy degree. Um, I believe there are a couple universities in Canada that were ahead of my university, but we were one of the first couple already to adopt the PharmD degree. Ontario might have been a bit quicker to adopt it, um, but granted, I would say we're a decade or two behind. I'm not sure when the PharmD started in the States, but we are quite behind in that sense. Um, with the bachelor's degree, the first year of pharmacy is your basic science training. Um, so you don't really dive into the pharmacy, core pharmacy um, courses until second and third year. In fourth year, you do a three month rotation and that's pretty much it. So in terms of the clinical experience or the experiential education, um, it's a lot less compared to the new PharmD degree. Um, I'm not sure how similar it is to the PharmD degree in the States now with rotations, but our entire fourth year is rotations and we get rotations in first, second and third year summer. Okay. And you said it was a spontaneous decision to do this in the first place. I mean, what's the expect, has it met expectations or what's the experience been like so far? Yeah, I think it was pretty exciting going in without any expectations because there aren't any pharmacists in my family. I hadn't spoken to any pharmacist except for maybe like when I picked up prescriptions when I was younger. So I had 
no idea what to expect, but I knew that this was something that was interesting to me, so I thought I'd give it a try. Um, it's been a really great four years. I'm now graduating in a couple months, and I think I've discovered a lot about myself through my degree. Um, I've definitely changed a lot. Pharmacy is not at all what I expected. Um, when I first went in, I think like many students, we're, we're kind of taught that there's, you know, your traditional hospital route and your traditional retailer community route. And that was what I was just focusing on in first year. But after second year, or at the beginning of second year, I actually attended a health hackathon. And that just kind of opened my eyes. And that was kind of the catalyst to discovering different areas within healthcare, not just within pharmacy, but within healthcare that I could explore. And I believe that pharmacy is a very versatile profession. And out of all the healthcare professions, in fact, I think pharmacy is most versatile. And that's what I've found through talking to people and be exposing myself to different opportunities. And now it's like, there's way more than just community and hospital pharmacy practice. I think community and hospital is still a really great practice, but there's way more out there than the first year student, me, thought. <laughs> no, I, I couldn't agree more. The pharmacy profession is so versatile. It's, and honestly, it's not all that well defined, meaning, you know, I think the opportunities are endless in the field of quote unquote pharmacy. Yeah. Um, so you, that was so cool, the health hackathon. I remember we talked before about this, but maybe give a little bit of detail about exactly what that was and how that's kind of molded your interest in pharmacy. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the health hack, come on, it's called, it's called Hatching Health and it's um, hosted by UBC. Um, they invite students or professionals from healthcare, uh, from design, business, um, people with an entrepreneurial background and engineers. Um, so they accept about a hundred participants each year. Um, I had just saw a posting or an ad on social media and thought that it was quite interesting, you know, integrating healthcare with engineers. Like I wasn't quite sure what to expect there either. Um, but essentially it's, um, 24 to 48 hour type hackathon. It, starts off uh, Friday night with a networking type event. And then Saturday morning, people go up on stage and pitch their ideas about problems in healthcare that they've seen. And then you form teams and you have to have a minimum of um, one member from each discipline, so to speak. Um, and you start hacking away. And then um, Sunday comes around and then you do presentations. You present your prototype or the solution that your team came up with, and then it goes on to finals and whatnot. Um, so that was a really rewarding experience. I've actually done it for um, three years consecutively now, um, just because it's really opened my eyes to, you know, how to think about healthcare from different perspectives, to think a little bit outside the box. And maybe because I've always come from a science background, like going to chemistry, pharmacology, even in high school, my interests were always in science. I had never taken any electives in business or any other fields. So I was very, you know, kind of sheltered within the healthcare and science world and just seeing the different perspectives and what other people had ideas about for healthcare was just very enlightening. How did you come across the the hack line? You said it was a posting. What was it? Was it facilitated through the school, or was that something you kind of fi uh, found yourself? It was facilitated through the school. I think the organizers were just marketing it through social media. It was their second year organizing it, um, so now they're on to their fourth year. Um, it was quite unusual for me, just because. I have friends in engineering and I had heard about hackathons before, but for the most part, those are hackathons um, involving coding for a whole weekend, creating apps and platforms that are all more technical based. This was the first time that I'd seen something that was, you know, primarily healthcare based. And I was like, how do you hack healthcare? Um, but when you bring all the minds together, you know, it's, it's really fascinating what people come up with in just 24 to 48 hours. That's so cool. What do you think is, um, you know, as you've gone through the program now at UBC, uh, what do you think is missing from traditional pharmacy uh, education and training that might help students better prepare for the future after graduation? So we talked about how pharmacy is a very versatile profession. And 
I know it's really difficult fitting in all these courses in your three-year curriculum since you're gone all of fourth year, but I, I kind of wish that there were more, maybe electives in the form of electives, but more training in technology. We know that technology is going to be disrupting our pharmacy practice, especially in retail, um, probably in other settings as well. And to get an understanding of technology, I think is really important for students. You know, whether we like it or not, technology is coming. And I think the only way that we're going to be able to improve and advance our profession is to learn more about this technology and, and how it can help our profession, you know. Um, so maybe a course or two in technology. I know informatics is a big thing, up and coming field, um, especially in the States. I haven't really encountered anybody in Canada that does pharmacy and informatics, but maybe an elective of some sort or to integrate some idea of informatics, big data, um, analytics into a course. I would say maybe some more business perspectives would be very helpful. We did have a business course um, in our third year. It's just one term, but I feel like it was, you know, we were just touching on concepts. We, we didn't even have the time to really apply those concepts into our practice. And again, I know that we have very limited time, um, but for students who do want to explore that, perhaps they could take future electives. Um, there's a lot out there, you know, I hear about pharmacists creating like virtual education rotations, um, just the flexibility for students to create electives for themselves or directed studies, rotation experiences that kind of cross disciplines. I think that would be very valuable. With so much out there, what is next for Christy Chung? I mean, there's all kinds of different options. You're interested in a lot of different things. How are you approaching your career planning and path after graduation? Right. Um, so I guess since the hackathon, I've been re become really interested in health technology, digital health and innovation, so to speak. I wasn't really sure whether I could pursue a career in this path. You know, even though the hackathon had opened my eyes to the possibility of integrating my pharmacy skills with other professions, I was like, you know, but what if I can't really create a career out of this? Um, I was like, maybe I can practice in hospital or community and then pursue this on the side. But I couldn't really envision a career rooted in digital health. So I kept exploring, you know, I kept my mind open. I started talking to more people. And being on the West Coast, we don't get a lot of exposure in terms of industry. You know, a lot of the pharmaceutical companies are in the East Coast, their headquarters are there. Um, but I came across the industrial residency program um, through hearing it from some friends, um, some alumni and things, and other people. So I thought that that might be the most appropriate route for me to go. I didn't really see myself in community or hospital. I wanted to learn more about maybe the business side, a bit of um, technical side, and I've always wanted to be at the forefront of healthcare, you know. So I applied for the industrial residency program and I was very fortunate to have gotten in. So I'll be moving to Toronto. Woohoo! Yay, Christine! Hey, nice. Congratulations. You. you heard it here first on the non-traditional <laughs> pharmacist. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll be moving um, in the fall to Toronto um, and I will be with Sanofi Genzyme. So it's a one-year residency. I know in the States it's a two-year industrial residency, more of a fellowship type thing. Um, but I think it'll be a very good first step for me to start exploring more of the future of medicine, to integrate my pharmacy skills with other aspects that are maybe, maybe you wouldn't get exposed to in community and hospital. Um, I think within industry, within each company, there are so many different teams like marketing, sales, um, information, education, strategy. I'm really looking to complement my pharmacy skills a bit more with skills from other disciplines. So I thought that that was most suitable for me. How is this path going to fit in with your personal life? Because it sounds like you have a, a good idea of how it's going to address kind of your professional goals, but how right. is this residency and this new kind of non-traditional path fitting in with everything else? You got to move, you have to move. So mm -hmm. that's going to be a change. Um, what about the other aspects of your personal life? Um, I've actually moved around quite a bit throughout my life. So I'm quite comfortable with moving. I'm very excited to start a job, I guess. I've been in school for so many years now. Um, I was in 
McGill, so Montreal for two years um, at the earlier part of my undergrad. So I've been in the East Coast and to be honest, the West Coast is beautiful and I never thought I would go back to the East Coast, but I would say that right now at this point in my life, I'm quite career oriented. So I'm willing to move for um, a more idealistic career. Um, now, I think Toronto is a bigger metropolitan area compared to Vancouver and it will be exciting living in a slightly bigger city and they have quite a big tech and innovation hub there especially within healthcare or even other disciplines and I think I'm very excited to kind of be in the middle of that all you know while I am exploring the industry side of pharmacy I think I'll spend a lot of my time on the weekends or even after work exploring the other areas that Toronto has to offer or the you know the tech hubs because that's still something that I'm interested in whether it be a future side hustle or a personal project or venture, I'm still seeking to learn more about technology because I think there's a lot of potential in technology in terms of healthcare and we can really leverage what's out there now, you know, to improve healthcare, improve the practice of pharmacy, improve even industry, you know? Yeah. So happy for you, Christy. That's really, really exciting. Yeah. You're going to have a blast in Toronto and it's going to be, it's going to be really, really great. Um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering what advice you would give to um, either, I, I guess, either students uh, considering pharmacy school or pharmacy students already in the program um, just yeah. as they go through career exploration. I would say, I, I still think, you know, um, first year students right now, the way the PharmD curriculum is built is to push future pharmacists to be more clinical. Even if they practice in retail, I think they want students to advance the profession more clinically. But I think that people should recognize that there's so much more out there. Um, so definitely encourage students to get involved. There's your, you know, your usual clubs that are always there, but I think to look for extra curriculars and networking opportunities beyond pharmacy. Like don't just close yourself off to pharmacy. Yes, you're now in a professional program and that's really great. And most people, they probably wanna stick with the, the, that path and that career, right? They probably know that they wanna be a pharmacist if they're gonna to go to pharmacy school, but realize that pharmacy profession is not just black and white. You can really integrate it with so many different disciplines. And there's a lot out there that you know, that is waiting to be explored. And it's not just different career paths, but I think you can really create your own career path. And that's something that really scared me at first. And even though now I'm not really creating my own career, I think it's possible in the future. Um, when I was talking earlier about um, digital health and not really being sure about whether I could pursue a career in digital health. Now I've spoken to pharmacists in the States who work for startups, you know, who give their perspectives to different tech type products, but with a pharmacy perspective. And I think it is, there, there definitely is a potential for you to create your own career. So definitely get out there and don't just look for opportunities within pharmacy. Learn from other professionals and be open to learning from other professionals outside of healthcare because there's a lot you can learn from people who view healthcare without a healthcare mind, if that makes sense. <laughs> it does make sense. Very, very, very well said. And I think I know where this next one's gonna go or where you're gonna take this next question, but where okay. do you see the profession of pharmacy moving in the future? Yeah, um, I do see it integrating with a lot more other disciplines. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you know, now I've spoken to pharmacists who are in informatics and I just, I, I didn't even know it was a field. And I feel like pharmacy can definitely pair with so many other fields. And I feel like that's where it's headed. You know, it's not gonna be community and hospital anymore. You know, that bran those branches are just gonna keep growing. And I think people are gonna find more and more opportunities in pharmacy. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you for that insight, Christy. And thanks for your take today on, on the non-traditional pharmacist. We wish you the best in your future endeavors as you move past graduation. Excited to have you on the show. Um, a, a great example of, um, it, Christy, you're a great example of a student that is approaching the pharmacy pr profession in what we feel is the correct way in that there's many uh, different opportunities out there and allow yourself to explore those to really find what professional path works for you. 
not only to meet your professional goals, but also your personal goals. So thank you again for your time. Uh, we look forward to seeing everyone next time on The Non-Traditional Pharmacist. Take care and have a great week.